Now that we have discussed a handful of chatbot terminologies, let us see how they come together on the platform. We will use the Natural Language Understanding section, or NLU in short, to create an intent to represent the food ordering use case and map it to possible utterances. We will also train the bot on this data and test how it processes user inputs. Finally, we will also see how to use an intent to trigger a flow. In the Studio module, select the NLU section and click on the Intents page. Click on Add New Intent button. We can give a name for our intent here for the food ordering new case. Let us call it Get Food. We can add a relevant utterance in the text box below and click on Add New Utterance button to add further utterances. We need to train the bot on all possible user inputs that are relevant to our use case. The bot will get more knowledgeable as and when we add more relevant utterances here. Click on the Submit button and the new intent gets added to the existing list. We can add more utterances to an intent at a later stage as well. A suggestion feature is provided in this page which allows us to review and add relevant utterances to the existing list. We can also edit these suggestions before adding them. We can click on the Tools button and test the bot on utterances. Enter an input that has been mapped to the Get Food intent. We can see a response printed on the screen. Enable Verbose to see this response in more detail. Different fields are printed here with different values that suggest how the input is being processed by the bot currently. The intense field is empty. The platform operates with a natural language processing engine under the hood which trains the bot with its understanding of global contexts. For example, when we type a generic intent here, we can see that the bot is capable of evaluating it to return an agreeable response. The global model influences the business-specific data that we add as intents and utterances. More than one intent needs to be added to a bot in order to train it. A few additional intents have been added here. Click on the drop-down next to the Train Intents button. In the Feature Type drop-down, we can choose between the Sentence Encoder and Multilingual Feature Training Models to train the bot. Sentence Encoder is best suited when the bot's default language will only be English. If we add multiple languages that the bot needs to be trained on, we can choose the Multilingual model. The EPICS value influences the machine learning model used for training the bot and this indicates the number of times that the bot is going to be trained on the existing data set. Setting this value too low or too high can lead to underfitting and overfitting issues where the bot has not readjusted its understanding after being provided new data. Both these scenarios can be problematic and we would recommend to set this value to 25. Click on the Train Intense button. The training process usually takes a few seconds. Once the Train Intense button is activated, we know that the training is complete. We can test the bot again on the Get Food Intent. On entering a relevant utterance, we can now observe that the bot is capable of detecting the mapped intent with a high degree of confidence. The training will impact the bot confidence for all the utterances that it is trained on. The confidence score varies for each user input. Addition of words in the input that has not been used for the training will impact the overall confidence. In the NLU section under Tools, the minimum confidence threshold for the bot can be configured. The bot can trigger a flow or an FAQ response only if the confidence score for a user input is above the minimum confidence that is set. This threshold is set to 0.85 by default. Let us create a flow in the Flows tab to understand how this works. Click on the Flows drop-down and then on the Create Flow button. In the Marketplace section, we can create a flow by choosing a template from the list. For now, let us create a flow from scratch. Give the flow a suitable name and a description. We can choose a category from the list where we want to house the flow. Alternatively, we can create a new category. Click on the Save button. We can now see a flow builder section created for designing our flow. A start node has also been added. Clicking on this node will allow us to configure it. In this node, a trigger needs to be mapped which will let the bot know when to start this conversation with the user. The trigger can be an intent, entity, event, or a URL. Let us choose intent and choose the intent that we created for our use case. When the user input is detected as the intent that we have mapped in the start node, the corresponding flow will be triggered. 
Various nodes are offered by the platform to configure different bot responses. Let us add a text message to demonstrate how the flow gets triggered. We can test the configured flows in the bot using the chat window provided. Let us use the utterance used in the NLU section. We can see that the flow gets triggered and the nodes added in this flow get executed. If we use an utterance that the bot is not trained on, we can see that the bot executes the fallback message. This is because the confidence of the bot is below the minimum confidence threshold. We can also note that this utterance is completely different from the one used to train the bot. On modifying the trained utterance with slight variations, we can see that the bot is able to trigger the flow. The bot's confidence score is impacted only slightly with these variations. We can try increasing the minimum confidence to a value higher than the confidence displayed for this variation. If we test the bot again with this setting, we can observe that the bot is unable to trigger the flow. The minimum confidence threshold should be configured based on the amount of variations that we would like the bot to handle. Setting this value too high will lead to the bot not being flexible enough to handle untrained data. Setting this value too low can lead to the bot being confident for irrelevant inputs. This value cannot be set below 0.7 in the platform and the recommended value is 0.85. Along with the minimum confidence, we can configure thresholds for global contexts, the secondary model and document searches as well. Multi-intent settings can also be enabled to let the bot detect multiple intents in a single user input. In the conversation settings page, we can configure settings impacting the bot behavior. These include auto-detecting a language, translating quick reply options, enable go back, go home and set aliases. Enabling intelligence switching allows the bot to switch between flows even in the middle of a conversation when a new intent is detected. Step validation settings allow us to configure settings specific to the WhatsApp channel. The channel does not support all types of responses that works in a web interface and these settings help us work around the restrictions. More on these settings in the Studio Advanced course. It is worth mentioning a few best practices to be followed when training the bot using the NLU section. Make sure that the utterances added to an intent are distinct and yet relevant to the intent. They should be meaningful sentences or phrases, rather than single words. Add at least 15 to 20 utterances for each intent created on the platform. Also, it is advised to add equal number of utterances for every intent. Minor variations that include change in the character casing or only a few words need not be added as separate utterances and the bot can handle these variations in real time even without training. Flows on the platform should be modularized to complete a task. It is advisable to create multiple such flows and then link them in sequence to implement a use case. For example, the food ordering use case includes the task of ordering food, making a payment and storing the user details for future reference. For example, at the end of the flow to order food, the payment-related flow can be triggered. User details can also be checked in the beginning. If the user details exist, we can continue with the configured flows, else we can trigger a user registration-related flow. Modularizing flows also helps in maintenance and reuse of utility-related flows in multiple use cases. Also make sure that multiple flows do not try to achieve the same task. Details on best practices can be checked on our official documentation, docs.yellow.ai.